All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the first tutorial in the QGIS series. My name is Miranda Sugars. I'm going to be walking you through the basics of using QGIS, which is a free open source GIS um, platform. So GIS is basically digital mapping. So in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to use the basic QGIS interface and then how to make a quick map uh, in this example, we're going to be making a map of Blacksburg, Virginia, because that's where I am right now. And I'm going to show you um, sort of where that information comes from and how you can style it. So that means, you know, how, how you make it look a certain way based on the information that it's showing. And then how you can get a little bit of basic information out of it as well. So just kind of the basics of making a physical map um, that you might use in your studio or just to kind of, you know, show off to your friends or whatever. All right, so we are going to go ahead and I'm gonna start by just sharing a couple of screens with you guys. So first I just wanted to show you, this is where you're gonna to go to download QGIS. So step one, download QGIS. So all you have to do is search for QGIS download and you should get this page. When I'm recording this, the latest um, LTR, which stands for long-term release, is 3.28.5. Um, it's all right if it changes by the time you see this and download it. I recommend downloading the latest long-term release. So you'll see this is gonna be the button to download the latest version, but I recommend just going for the long-term release because it tends to be a little bit more stable. And you can download for Mac or for Windows you can download for Linux if you have a Linux system. That one's a little bit more involved. Um, so go ahead and download that. That's going to take a minute to download. Um, and while you're doing that, uh, a couple of things I wanted to kind of show you. One is the QGIS documentation. So if you have any questions about QGIS that I don't answer and that you don't want to just randomly Google, I highly recommend reading through this documentation. It's very user friendly. It comes with a bunch of QGIS tutorials. It's pretty easy to skim through. It's not like a manual book. It's, it's more readable than that. And it tells you a lot about the features that we're not going to talk about in these videos. So the second thing I wanted to mention quickly is that we're going to be downloading our geographic data today from a platform called OpenStreetMap, which you see here. So like QGIS, OpenStreetMap is also a free and open source um, mapping platform similar to Google Maps, but it's instead of being run by uh, a, a for-profit company, um, OpenStreetMap is actually all user contributed. So it, it's actually um, actively updated by people all the time. Um, that's fantastic for a lot of reasons. The ethos of it is, is really important to, um, to what I believe is, is significant in mapping today. But um, the other thing to note is that because it's, it's user uh, generated and similarly to how Wikipedia is, there might be some things missing. You might occasionally find errors in how buildings are labeled or if the buildings were automatically traced, you know, you might have some strange outline uh, artifacts that, that picked up a roof when it should have been a floor plate or something like that. But typically the issue you're going to have with this is um, lack of data. So you might have some some cities where there just aren't very many buildings that have been inputted into OpenStreetMap. The other issue you might have is the format of the data. So in the US, which is where we're going to be doing the tutorials, the data is formatted pretty consistently. In other countries, it might be sort of bundled differently. So that might mean um, the layers that you can download won't be as cleanly separated into buildings versus waterways versus roads, etc. So just keep in mind that depending on where you're downloading the data from, you might need to do a little bit more work of sorting it out. And we'll talk about how you could do that a little bit later in the tutorial. But I just wanted to show you here for reference. So I'm going to zoom into Blacksburg, Virginia here. And we can see the roads coming up. We can see all the buildings, all the little labels saying kind of what certain types of buildings are. You can see they have the pathways in here as well. Everything that you can see in here 
we can download. Uh, we're going to use a plugin for QGIS uh, called Quick OSM, OSM OpenStreetMap. So with Quick OSM, you can download the geographical data uh, in Q in uh, OpenStreetMap of a certain ge of a certain uh, physical dimension. So you can't download all of Richmond's buildings at once, for instance. It's too much information. It can't pass through that, that plugin. You could download it in, in kind of chunks of the city. Um, but here, with a, with a city like Blacksburg, it's small enough that we actually can download all the data at once. But just be aware there are some limitations with the amount of data that you can download at once. And um, I think, for instance, all the buildings in Richmond came to somewhere over one gigabyte of data. It, it's pretty massive because you don't just have the physical footprint of the building, you also have uh, any information about the building. So just to quickly give you an example of what that looks like, if we zoom into, let's zoom into Kogel Hall, which is where the architecture department is based here. So um, you can see here these different layers if you want to look at it differently. You can also see this little question mark here. It says query features. So this is this is helpful if you want to say download all the buildings, but you're not sure what the buildings are classified as. So when you're doing a search, we'll we'll look at this later. Um, you'll need to search by keyword, right? Because it has this. You can think of this as a big database of features, and the database includes location as well as shape information. So it's got the location of say McBride Hall at this latitude and longitude in the database, but it also has the um, geographic, the ge geometrical outline of it in the database. It's also got a ton of information like the fact that it's called McBride Hall and the fact that it's a university building and whatever else the user who put it in there decided to add to the OpenStreetMap database. So because of that, it's useful to know how these things are classified that way when you're what's called querying the database with the plugin that we're going to use when you're searching through it for all the information you want you're going to say for instance I want all of the buildings in Blacksburg Virginia um, or if you wanted all of the roads in Blacksburg Virginia they're not actually called roads in OpenStreetMap they're called highways even if it's just you know a small dirt road or driveway it's still called a highway that's its classification so you can use this to kind of get a sense of what the um, data type is classified as. So let's say I want to know what these trees are classified as. So I'll just bring the little question mark over here and I'll click on that. And you'll see it comes up with a bunch of different options and as you hover over it highlights that part. So I can see even here steps. So they even have a difference in classification between paths and steps. But I wanted to know what this tree right here was classified as. So I'm going to click on that, and then it tells me it's it's only got one tag, natural, and it's called tree. So in the natural category, I would search for the tree type if I want to download all of these trees uh, in Blacksburg, Virginia. So let's go to Kogel Hall, and I'll show you a slightly more extensive um, version. So there we go. So University Building, Kogel Hall. So I click on that. And you can see all of this information has been inputted for this building. So when I download this building, I'll have a spreadsheet that has all of this information in it. When I download all of the buildings for Blacksburg, it'll come in one big spreadsheet that has basically all of these possible tags as the, um, as the horizontal uh, column titles, and then all of the different buildings are going to be the vertical um, rows. So in the row of spreadsheet information for Kogel Hall, it'll have all of this information in different columns. And we'll see that a little bit later on in the tutorial. But I just wanted to give you a sense of kind of how you can understand what the information is that you even are able to download in different locations. Um, so for example, we can see that Blacksburg has pretty thorough information in it. But if I zoom out a little bit, I'm going to close this. If I zoom out a little bit and I go up to uh, Roanoke up here and I zoom into Roanoke, 
I can see it's got most of the buildings downtown, but as soon as I come over to some of these peripheral neighborhoods, all of this building information is missing. So that tells me that there was probably some kind of initiative to input certain buildings or that OSM was able to scan certain buildings, but for some reason um, was not able to scan all of these uh, row homes and things like that in the um, in the sort of outer quadrants of the city. Um, so with Roanoke, luckily there is another information source. OSM is just one information source. With Roanoke, uh, if you do want the building information data, you can just go directly to Roanoke City's GIS portal and you can download all of the building information from there. You can also download the parcel data from there. Um, so sometimes, you know, you have to go directly to the source. But typically the OSM plugin, as we'll see, is a really quick and easy way to sort of get started with these things. Okay, so now that I've given you a quick overview of where we're getting our data from, we're going to go ahead and open up QGIS and jump into the mapping. So a quick note too, um, if you get an error message, if you're installing it on say a Mac or a Windows, and you get an error message that says, this is from a third party software, we can't verify its security. That happens a lot with QGIS just because it's an open source, independently developed software. Um, just go ahead and click ignore. It's very safe to use on your computer. There won't be any viruses that you'll come with, at least as far as I have been aware. I've never seen that problem before. Um, obviously, I'm not a developer for QGIS, so, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But in, in the classes I've taught with this and all the years I've been using it, I've never had an issue with the security. So if you see that message pop up, I always just click ignore and, and go ahead with it.